Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So I'm building a high power LED flashlight as you might have seen and for that I'm using these 100 watt LEDs. Uh, first I ordered these 8 LEDs that you see over here but then uh, if you seen my other video you'd know that I had to up my game a little bit uh, suddenly and then I went and ordered 10 more and the LEDs are not the exact same type if you look at them the grid is more pronounced than this one over here. This is a little more matte or dull or whatever we should call it. And if I don't know if it shows up on the camera but the individual LEDs in this look a bit more oval or square. On this one they look more round. Well uh, back on topic. The first ones I got here they they have a little problem with them. And I think it's easiest to show you if I just plug them in. And I have seen this before on YouTube so I was aware that it could happen. I can't remember I can't remember exactly when. Uh, I think it's about a year ago or something. But uh, you see the problem here that only very few of the LEDs are actually lighting up. So you might think that uh, the rest of them are just shorted out or something since only two lights up. They are in series this way, uh, if you can see that on the bond wires there. And they are in parallel this way. Basically this uh, out here is a power bus and they just tap the bond wires directly from this and jump them across the LEDs from the plus here to the negative here. So you might think for these two LEDs for example to light up all the others must be shorted because they should have the same voltage drop. But uh, watch what happens if we turn up the current a little bit. You can see now a few more has lit up. And if we, we increase it, let's say we give it another 100 milliamps. So now we're at, oops, too much. So now we're at 125 milliamps. And you can see some more LEDs have lit up. And if I uh, hold this as close as I can to the camera. If we look at just one row it looks like the LEDs have around the same brightness. But if you can see the difference between the top row and the second one from the top you can see the second one is brighter because there's only three LEDs. So let's give it another 100 milliamps. So now we're at 225 milliamps. But now you can see this there's a bit of unevenness in the top row now. The two that just turned on are not as bright as the others. And 320. Now you can see almost all of them are on, but now there's definitely difference in the brightness. And at uh, 425 milliamp, the camera is struggling to keep up. But you can see now basically only the top right corner is not lit. The camera does a good job of this, by the way. If I uh, turn this towards the bench, you can see it's it's really lit. <laughs> so I think I heard or read somewhere that uh, they claim that half of the uh, tiny LEDs in here are not working and uh, they're shorted out and the different rows don't have the same voltage drop and that will make the LEDs burn out in a very short time but as you can see in fact all of the LEDs or almost all there was one that didn't light up but I didn't turn it uh, any higher in voltage because they get very warm almost all of the LEDs were actually working uh, I'm not saying that they won't die <laughs> because as you can see they are not evenly lit so there's probably also difference in the current it's not easy to tell with this camera of course because it's not built for it and it doesn't really have the dynamic range. But it looks like that they evens out the more current they get. So they are probably not as bad as I first thought. But they are definitely not very well made either so it's nothing to write home about. But the funny thing is that the second batch that I ordered here, uh, those that are slightly different, if we plug this in, and I turned it back to 5 milliamps, by the way.
look at that they all on what a surprise and actually looking at it it's much brighter at 5 milliamps than the other ones are so these are definitely much better made they're not all this good but uh, I didn't find any that had more than uh, two lazy LEDs <laughs> if we should call it that uh, let's see this one yeah that was one of yeah actually that has two bad ones so I tested all of them just to see and uh, four of them are actually perfect and I think two of them had one missing and then uh, the rest had two like this one but it's still much much better than the other and uh, if you turn up the current on this one you can see now this one is also coming on this one is still off and now we're at 15 milliamps so that's now it's 25 uh, let's see that's 80 and yeah, now it came on so you can still see it's not as bright as the others I can definitely tell that it's that one right there in front of my finger and I'll just give you a little sneak peek of what these are capable of if you haven't seen uh, the flashlight video so this is uh, 3 amps and if I hold it against the ceiling facing down on the table uh, it gets pretty bright and in comparison I have uh, 100 watts of fluorescent tubes just above this table so uh, it really does make a difference so I'm actually not quite sure what's happening here because when only two of the LEDs light up you know we're still getting current through so it can't be just the forward voltage of the LEDs because then all of them would kinda light up slightly I would guess and considering that there's so much difference in voltage I'm wondering if maybe the current has another path through some of the dies here so that there's maybe just a purely resistive path uh, in parallel with the actual PN junction I'm not sure if it's possible to make an actual LED die, you know, the PN junction that you can pull current through and it doesn't light up until a certain threshold but uh, but if I should give it a guess myself, and it will only be a guess because I don't know very much about uh, semiconductor manufacturing, then it, I would think there would be like a resistive path also in parallel with the bad LEDs, so that only when there's enough voltage drop across that, then the LED, because it has a fixed voltage drop, will start to emit light if someone actually knows what is going on here then you are more than welcome to uh, post your idea in the comments and here I just found the second worst one of them all you can see there's only two LEDs and they are very 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 dim but it's at 7 milliamps if we just compare that to one from the other batch at 7 milliamps, I'm not changing anything you can see that that's quite the difference <laughs> so if there indeed is a resistive path through this that should be something we're able to measure now I picked this one that we just looked at where I can pass 7 milliamps through it and that's only when the LEDs just starts to light up if I put the power supply at 6 milliamps, uh, I can't see anything. So let's check this one. And uh, I'm not touching the probes. And you can see here we got 3.46k. Let's just flip the probes. 
and we get four key. That's close enough. Now let's uh, measure the other one from the other batch. Uh, and that's something else I'm going to show you also. You might be screaming at me right now because uh, you might know already. You can see here we have around 70 mega ohms. Oops, I don't know if I turned this now, but so here it's completely open circuit. And the other way we got the Yeah, no, it's like so this is due to the other thing that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> so this is basically open circuit when we measure the resistance. It should be that. It's a diode. that shouldn't be able to flow anything through it. But there's another problem. When you shine light at these, they will actually generate a voltage, just like a solar panel or a photodiode. Uh, they are not very good at it, but it's actually a significant amount when you get an LED this size, so let's measure the DC voltage. And, uh, let's go uh, positive to positive, negative to negative. And if I just step out of the way you can see we are generating 1.7 volts just by the fluorescent tubes in the ceiling. And if we Go and measure the short circuit current of that. DC I. We get around uh, 0 0.15 microamps. And I think if you do the calculation and you know how much current this multimeter sends out on the resistance measurement, you will find that that 1.5 microamp is enough to show 80 mega ohms across this. So let's just uh, cover this diode up and measure it again. So we're getting like no change in that polarity and that was the correct one. And no change in this polarity. So, back to resistance measurement. We get nothing. And we get nothing. And this multimeter measures up to one giga ohm, I think it is. Um, it might be 10, I don't remember actually. But Anyway, that proves that there is no resistive pass through this diode. And let's uh, take the other one. We will cover it up so we don't get that current generated through the LED. And then we'll measure it again. And sure enough, we have 4K. So I won't even bother measuring it the other way because we already saw the result. So that proved to me that this is some very dodgy <laughs> LED manufacturing they have going on there. But it also shows that these are probably not going to degrade that fast and uh, burn out because uh, the current is splitting kind of evenly and you saw the figure that it's, it's 4k through this. So that's a relatively high resistance and to get any significant uh, deviation in the power dissipation we would need a much lower value than that. It might change, of course, when we start pulling current through it and it heats up and stuff like that. But, but again, I'm not trying to defend them or anything. It's just uh, I still think it's hilarious that you can sell such crap if we are allowed to call it that. So I'm glad I took the time to measure these actually because I ended up learning something <laughs> from it, which is very nice. I'm sorry that I can't really help you to get the good ones because I ordered these from the same guy on eBay and uh, it was just, I think it was three days apart from I ordered these, maybe a week. 
from I ordered these to the next ones and it's it was the exact same item I just reordered the one that I already had in the history I hope you found it interesting at least I learned something uh, new today with these LEDs and just to summarize that if we have the positive rail on this side and the negative on that side then the LEDs are in a grid like this and I think there was 10 LEDs in series in the other one but it uh, doesn't matter I'll just draw a few and there would be 10 strings in parallel also now you can see if the forward voltage drop of the LEDs let's say that's uh, approximately 3 volts for a white LED if there was a deviation in this voltage drop between the individual LEDs, say this one was 2.9 volts and this one was 3 volts, then that doesn't really matter because the current can't start flowing before we got this total voltage across the LEDs. So that wouldn't explain why some of them can light up and some of them are off. It could explain though that this string could light up before this one. If this one had uh, say 3.1 and 3.1 and 3 volts then this one would light up before that one and what I think was going on with the parallel resistance would look something like this and now let's imagine they are all 3 volts just to make it easier then let's say this value is 1 kilo ohm um, that would mean that we need uh, 3 milliamps to get a 3 volt drop. So when we pass 3 milliamps through this, this LED will start to light up. Then if this one is, uh, say it's 500 ohm, then we would need 6 milliamps for that LED to start lighting up. And for this one, yeah, let's just say it's, it's 1K also. So that would also light up at 3 milliamps. So if you liked the video, Please give it the thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.